Yeah. Say, here he comes, folks. The great Tony Williams. Let's go. Wait.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Good to see all of you here. Thank you. My name is Tony Williams, and I've been, uh, well, let's see. First, I'd like to thank Armin Zildjian, Lenny DiMuzio, and all the staff of Zildjian for inviting me to attend uh, such a pre prestigious gathering of audience and drummers. I feel really honored to be here. My first time in uh, Dallas, Texas. So thank you for inviting me. As you see, by the way I'm dressed, I'm performing surgery in the morning. Um, I was born in uh, 1945, and uh, at the age of two, my parent, well, I was born in Chicago, let me say that, and at the age of two, my parents decided to move to Boston, and the fortunate thing about that was that they took me with them, so uh, that helped me a great deal, and in Boston, Boston being such a uh, educational capital of the world, you know that there are more institutions of learning in Boston than any other place on the planet. So you grow up in Boston with a uh, kind of tradition of learning and education and trying to um, always learn something new. And in Boston I had a great training with uh, a lot of drummers, uh, namely Alan Dawson, Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. And uh, he was kind enough to help me a great deal. And uh, Alan, along with uh, two other drummers, one named, um, we called him Baggy, Baggy Grant. And, um, damn, I forgot his name. Damn, well, it's been so long since I've done this. Anyway. There were three drummers in Boston, and Alan was a very uh, technically oriented drummer. He had all the technique in the world. And Baggy had no technique, but he could swing. He had a great feeling for the drums. And uh, the other drummer, I keep wanting to say Lenny DiMuzio, but, <laughs> but that's not his name. And I'll think of it in a minute. But this third drummer, <laughs> that I can't remember his name, <laughs> he, uh, he epitomized creativity. So at an early age, I realized that watching these three drummers, that not one of those things alone would be the answer, but all three things. Having as much technique and um, expressive ability, and then secondly, having the um, feeling that goes along with it. And thirdly, your creativity to, uh, to express yourself. So that's what I've tried to combine in my playing. And then when I uh, started really seriously working at it, the main drummers I was influenced by were Max Roach, Art Blakey, and Philly Joe Jones. Whew, I remembered all their names. Now. Max Roach and Philly Joe and Art Blakey epitomized the same three qualities. Max was very technically oriented. He played drums very melodically. Art Blakey played with all the drive and passion that you could ever ask for. And Philly Joe Jones played with a lot of animation and creativity. He played things that you wouldn't expect to see a drummer play. So all three qualities combined for me made what I thought would be the perfect drummer. So that has, uh, those three things are what I've strived for, being a drummer. And uh, I've also tried to, uh, in the recent years, to help foster a uh, sort of standard that seems to be missing in drum education. Seems that if you want to play piano or clarinet or uh, 
most instruments that there is a certain standard that you have to adhere to. Uh, you have to learn how to play certain scales if you're playing piano. You have to play in all the keys. You have to learn uh, how to read, all kinds of things. But with drumming, it seems is that uh, everyone, you know, someone who's uh, playing for one or two years, you know, they'll tell you that they have their own style and that uh, this is the way they play. And what I've tried to uh, help foster is a way that drummers as a fraternity and a brotherhood can have a, uh, a sort of standard. Uh, my idea of a good drummer is a drummer who one night can go and play behind Sarah Vaughan, the next night could play behind Glenn Campbell, the next night could play with Miles Davis, um, and so forth. And he could also read and do other things. So there's a world of drumming that is still untapped among many drummers. And uh, that's what part of my mission is that I'm uh, trying to crusade, as it were, and help uh, give the drums a little bit more of a respectability because there are many things that I see when I teach and give classes and give clinics. 90% uh, of the drummers that I come across can't play a double stroke roll. Um, and there's a technique that most people use that anybody can use. I know that uh, the drums are an instrument that just anybody can play. Anyone can sit up here and get a good, get a, get a sound out of the drums. All you have to do is tap them. And most people, most drummers I come across, play with the front part of the hand like this, with just maybe these two fingers. And uh, they rely basically on bounce meaning that uh, they're relegated to the surface that they're playing on. And they drop the stick and bounce it along like that. It's kind of a willy-nilly, haphazard type of technique is, to me. So from years of practice and watching a lot of drummers, because when I started very young, I started when I was nine, and uh, the first time I played a drum set was in front of an audience. and. At that time, there were many drummers around, traveling around the country that were incredible drummers. And I was fortunate enough to be able to see them. And I found out through watching them that the best drummers played a different way. They played with the back part of the hand, meaning these last two fingers. They held the stick basically here. So that means that the drummer has to play with his hand in the hand and not, not bouncing it, say, like this, but holding it with all the fingers and being in control. That's the difference. Being in control is one of the most important aspects of drumming. I don't know if you've ever played and you've played something and you've tried to figure, and in your mind, you probably say, boy, I hope this works. Well, I decided a long time ago that I didn't want to be subjected to that for the rest of my playing career. So I decided that whenever I played anything, I knew whether it was going to work or not. So I hold the sticks very firmly, and I don't rely on bounce, which helps a great deal, and it gives me a very solid technique. So that tells you a little bit about Tony Williams and uh, about some of my philosophy. And so now if I would like to answer some questions, if there are any questions out there from any one of you people. Everyone's got on the same t-shirt. How did that happen? My goodness. Pardon me? Play what? Play blues? Well, you see, blues is, uh, is a series of chords and melodies and things. And uh, the drums play rhythm, but I don't play any chords. I don't have a keyboard up here, so I can't play the blues. I mean, if I played guitar or something, I'd play the blues for you. It's a good question, though. Thank you. Any other questions, please?
Yes. No, no, I didn't. When I, uh, the question was, when I was copying and learning, did I, did, from Max Roach or Art Blakey, uh, did I practice just the solos? No, I didn't. I practiced, you know, I practiced everything that they played from the beginning of the song till the end. I tuned my drums exactly as they did, or, ex or as close as I could get, and I played exactly what they played. I believe that playing like someone is a great help. I think that it, it gives a person uh, a vocabulary. It gives you things that you don't have. And playing like people that have come before is the basis so that you can decide for yourself what you want to play and what you don't want to play. If you don't do these things, then you never know. You, you're just floundering around and, and, and being insecure. And uh, for lack of better reasons, everyone walks around saying, well, I've got my own style. Um, but I did. I practiced everything that they played so that I could decide what it is I didn't want. Yeah. Yeah, I try to play, he asked uh, my concept for playing fast tunes. My concept was that, um, and these are all great questions, uh, I tried to play ex the, the same way I'd play on slow tunes, meaning that I would hear drummers play one way on a slow song or a medium tempo, and as soon as the song, as soon as they played a faster song, the, the technique and everything changed. So what I tried to do was make everything sound the same so that when I played one song, it was the same intensity as a slow song. And uh, that takes concentration. It takes a lot, of, uh, a lot of hard work. But that's the concept. I tried not to make a distinction between fast songs and slow songs. Just like this drum set and my sticks, I can play very soft with these sticks. I can play very soft with this drum set. I don't have to change drum sets to play with a trio as opposed to a big band, as opposed to, you know, a group that's all electric. It's all the same. It depends on me and my technique. Yeah. Uh, yes, I have. I've, you know, been uh, doing a lot of studying and. Uh, at UC Berkeley. I live in Northern California and um, yeah, I've been doing quite a bit of writing and um, I've been working in the studio on some new projects and things like that and trying to uh, put a direction together so I can make a major assault on the record buying public. <laughs> so uh, yeah, any other questions? Yeah. Pardon me? I'm really stunned by the fluidity of your ride, ride pattern on up-tempo and how it's just conscious. You know, you're so conscious of it, it feels like it's so open. I mean, you know, what have you thought about, or, you know, how do you do your hand, or do you dance on the stage? Thank you. N no, if I counted, I'd be, uh, I'd be nuts. Um, uh, that comes from uh, being able to play one thing for long periods of time and uh, it started with the cymbal because in, in uh, the cymbal, the cymbal playing has to, is, is I think the most important for this type of drum set and what I did was concentrate basically on playing just the cymbal for long periods of time. That's what makes certain players sound good, because they can play in a straight line. My whole philosophy and concept is built on straight lines and evenness. Uh, my hands are always in the same position. Uh, one hand is not higher than the other. One hand is not in front of the other. And uh, my cymbal playing 
is based on being able to play one thing and not changing it ever. I mean, I do change it because I want to change it, because I choose to change it, not because uh, I can't help myself. So it's based on being real clear about my thoughts and making sure that when I play something, I know that what I'm playing is being heard, meaning that very early on I got a tape recorder, which was also a big help. And the first thing I did, the first thing I taped, I listened back to it, and uh, I listened for something, say, say in the 20th bar of what I was playing, and I listened for it, and I said, gee, that, that's not what I played. I, th I thought it was going to be there. And I realized that I had to be a little more clear about what I was doing, so that now when I play, I know that what I'm playing someone else is hearing because I play the drums for people. I play to be heard. I, I don't play just to, you know, just to get off. Um, it's, I love the drums, so I want everyone else to love the drums too. And, uh, so it's been a real trek to play clearly and to make sure that when I play something, it's clear and that someone else can hear it. So the symbol, your question, uh, brings that out, brings up the subject of being very clear. Uh, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I like it too. Uh, yes. I never, I never did. I never, I don't think I, ha I don't feel that way now. Um, uh, it's, I, I still feel like I'm playing the way that the people that I admire would be playing if, uh, if they were me. You know, I'm just taking what people have played and um, playing it in different places. Uh, turning things around. I'm just using my own uh, creativity to play things that have already been played, but actually saying to myself, well, let's see, if he played it this way, then I can play it this way. So, uh, but that concept started, I guess, by the time I was, uh, say about, uh, f I guess about 15 or 16. I had been playing, I guess, about uh, seven, eight years by that time. So uh, that's, that's what I think about my own playing. It's, uh, I mean, I, I'm always thinking about Art Blakey and Lewis Hayes and Jimmy Cobb and Roy Haynes and uh, Lex Humphreys. There's a thousand, there's many drummers that I've listened to and, and was able to see. See, the thing that was also important was that I was able to see these people firsthand. And another important factor was that when I first started playing, I had the, the, uh, the opportunity to play with people all the time, to play with the best players, the best bass players in Boston, the best piano players. As a little kid, I was playing with these people at night, going to school in the day, you know, grammar school and junior high school. But at night, you know, I was kind of living two, two lives, playing with my father's band at night. And, going to school in the daytime. So that had a lot to do with the development rather than just listening to records or practicing. There was also the, uh, the playing with people and getting used to different tendencies that players have, tendencies that horn players have, tendencies that piano players have, people that slow down or rush, you know. There's all these things that went into it. So my style has, uh, if you want to call it that, has developed through many different, uh, different uh, filters of, of life. Yes? Yeah, yeah, I could. <laughs> Brushes. Okay. Yeah. It's, 
it's, it's something both, I mean, I had to work on it, but um, independence, uh, independence is something that uh, came out of desire. Like a lot of things I play came out of uh, just a need to play them. You know, if I, if I felt like I needed a bass drum in a certain place, I would just start to play it there. So it can't, independence comes out of, you know, like necessity I sometimes. Um, a lot of times I get that question about how do you get independence? And the first thing that I found out that you have to have to be independent is coordination. And you can't be independent unless you first learn how to coordinate everything. Unless your hands and your feet are in sync with each other. Then, see the problem is, and this, I, go, I can go on and on about this, but it seems as though the problem is, is that you can try to be independent, but if the stuff is not coordinated first, it's all going to sound like a lot of, it's, it's just a mishmash of, of uh, ideas, and no one knows what you're doing. So my whole goal has been to be coordinated so that the independence sounds real clear and, uh, and good. So uh, independence is, um, it's not as important as, as a lot of people think it is. I think that sounding good and making other people feel good is real important. When you're playing with, some, with a band, with other people, you want them to really feel good. You want to give off a feeling of uh, relaxation and a lot of other things, which is more important than soloing or independence or a lot of other things. So, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, it's the music. I mean, I listen to music. It's not, it's not just drumming. I mean, it's, it's music that I'm mostly interested in and expressing musical ideas and uh, drumming is, drumming can be very melodic and musical. Uh, there are a lot of uh, great players that, that, that prove that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's another one. He asked what it was like playing with Miles. When I, Miles Davis. Um, uh, that, when I started with Miles Davis, I was uh, 17, and I left his band when I was uh, 22. And um, those years are very formative years in anyone's life. So for me, for I guess you can imagine being in a situation where you're playing with someone who up until that point was your was one of your idols and you get with them and they tell you that anything you do is okay. So that's what it was like. I was with a lot of people that whatever I played seemed to fit. And it was a it was a very um a very exciting experience for those years that I played with that band and uh, I can't begin to tell you the benefits that have um, come my way because of that <laughs> and uh, it's you know when you're that young and you and someone says that anything you do is all right it you gain a lot of confidence and a lot of um, maybe sometimes too much confidence but uh, I'm still working that out. About what? The stroke? Yeah, I'm having one now, actually. No, the stroke, uh, the, the, the technique I use is based on um, lifting the sticks with the hand. A lot of people think the drumming is from the wrist. Now, I see a lot of techniques that are either they talk about the wrist or they talk about fingers and they talk about snapping and all these things and it's a lot simpler than that. I mean, drumming, what I've tried to do is take out all of the uh, physical handicaps that people kind of get into and make drumming a very simple kind of thing. See, the, the hardest thing a drummer does is lift the stick. 
you've got gravity pulling it down. So the hardest thing that we do is lift it up because we're working against gravity. So I've tried to make it real simple and use the hand, not the wrist, not the fingers, but the hand. And the hand lifts the stick and it puts it down. So the concept is just being in control all the time. So that when I play something, I know what it's going to sound like and I know what it's, the, the results. And uh, it's hard to uh, show you because you're up there. But just explaining it a little bit, that's what it's about for me, both hands. Another thing is that I believe that all drummers should learn how to play with a traditional grip. The only reason people don't is because they think that it's awkward and that it's hard. And uh, you can get a lot of reasons why people play match grip all the time. They'll tell you that uh, it's easier. or That's one thing I don't believe because I don't believe that the drums are supposed to be easy. So that's a cop out. And then they say that, well, they want both hands to be the same. Well, I don't believe that. I like the fact that I have a left hand and a right hand, and that my left hand has to be coordinated with my right hand. It's like life. If you have two people that are the same, you're going to get bored. People, you know, I mean, you need spice in life. So using the traditional grip in the left hand and um, this grip in the right hand, means that I have to coordinate these things and I get a sense of a right and a left. I'm not playing with two right hands and I'm not playing with two left hands. So that has a lot to do with my technique and philosophy also. Um, uh, the match grip is, is not, so, I mean, I, what it means is if you don't play, if you're not able to play with the traditional grip in the left hand, it's like saying you want to be a piano player but you never want to play with the black keys or something like that. So anyway, there's a whole vocabulary of things that people have played for years using this grip. And if you don't want to learn those things, it's sort of like saying you don't particularly want to learn all there is to know about drumming. And, and good drummers, to me, are those that want to take advantage of all there is to be played. Yeah. Yes, I am. Um, no, I don't have to demonstrate it. I can just tell you that the mind works in a certain way and that if you hold your hand this way, see drumming is very sensory and if I hold my hand in a certain way, my mind is going to think in a certain way. And if I hold it this way, my mind thinks in a way. And if I hold it this way, I'm not going to think of certain things. And if I hold it this way, I'm not going to think of certain things. That's what I'm saying. It's real simple. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Yes, sir.
Thank you. That was a, a little bit, a bit over the top, I think. But uh, the uh, I just had a lot of uh, experience watching a lot of drummers play and uh, having the opportunity to play with good people. Uh, one of the basic things for drumming is bass players. When I, I see, uh, all through my career, my best friends have all been the bass players in the group. I think drummers and bass players have a uh, affinity for each other. And uh, the bass players I've been playing with have always been kind enough to uh, let me be crazy. And they've uh, kind of laid back and held everything together most of the time. So that uh, has a lot to do with that kind of playing. Um, maybe sometime, uh, if you get a chance and you see me playing somewhere, you'll come around and watch me play with some musicians, which is a better, better atmosphere. Uh, because I'd rather do that than to, uh, than to talk and explain things. But, uh, yeah, another question. Could you say that again? I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Is it difficult to commercialize it? Um, yeah, no, it isn't. It, it, no, no, it, I mean, they just have, I, I like playing with, uh, with good players, but their names are not, you know, the, uh, <laughs> no, the quality of their names is not, I don't find that a problem at all. The commercial aspect? No, I mean, it's, 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 it's all commercial. Once you make a record, you're commercial. I mean, it's, I mean, when you make something and then sell it, it's, it's commercial. So it, it, that's not a problem at all. Um, I think the reason I, I, I took up writing music was to play the drums more. I realized that, uh, I mean, I like music. I, I've always wanted to be a composer. But I also found out that the more I wrote, the, uh, the easier it would be to play. So I've been trying to basically concentrate on my own abilities and, and uh, help myself along. Yeah. Uh-huh. No. No, I don't. Yeah, I, I try to. I see a lot of people with, uh, with huge drum sets and they don't play them. They don't play uh, half of them sometimes. I believe that it's best to play what, to have what you, pl what, what you hear. I mean, I hear all these drums. I can hear things to play on them. I think if I had if I had too, you know, if you have too many drums sometimes, it's, 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 it's kind of um, superfluous. And uh, the tuning of the drums is very important for me. And uh, this is the set I play all the time. I played this, this configuration for the last, uh, I think, eight, eight years. No, e more than that. I think since uh, 72, yeah. Since 72. Pardon me? These drums? These are my drums. Yeah, all the way from my basement <laughs> in uh, San Anselmo, California. Uh, do you tune your drums to uh, specific pitches? No, he asked, do I tune the drums to specific pitches? No, I tune them to uh, relative resonance. I pick, you know, what I do is I start with the uh, with the uh, tom, which is the, the snare drum tom, this one, and I, uh, well, that's out of tune, and I uh, tune the rest of the drums so that they sound, they sound, um, it's, they sound coordinated. 
meaning that you can tell which drum I'm hitting. It just doesn't sound like uh, one tom does not sound like the other. They sound distinct into themselves. The two hardest to tune are these, well, the three hardest are these three to get them to sound distinct. They're out of tune right now. I haven't played them in a couple of days. I like them to sound like a series of tones that sound uh, kind of harmonious. The same thing with the cymbals, because this is Zildjian Day. Um, the cymbals I, I choose are all, uh, um, they sound good as a group, but they also sound good individually. Each cymbal has a distinct sound, and one doesn't wash out the other. So that's, that's just a simple, simple concept that I try to use. But all the drums are distinctive, and all the cymbals are distinctive. But they all sound good as a group of cymbals or drums. OK? Yeah, he asked when I go to sessions, do I have uh, problems with people that want to muffle the drums? And the answer is yes, because, um, and I don't mind doing that, but that whole uh, studio sound is uh, what it is. It's a producer, it's as if, you know, it's not a drummer's sound, it's not a drum sound, it's a studio producer engineer drum sound where the drums end up sounding like a series of cardboard boxes which is okay, but um, these are not those kind of drums. And uh, I can play, it doesn't matter, you know, I can play on anything, but uh, that is a problem sometimes. I like to, uh, I have different techniques that are different for the studio than for live, and it's a, it, is, it can be a problem sometimes if the engineer is not, uh, if he's not open to trying other things, and then it's a problem, and then you, you know, <laughs> you have a big problem sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Is the muffler in the bass drum? Yeah, it is. It's on the other side. It's touching the beater head. And the strand on the snares are uh, the big ones, the 15, uh, I think they're 15, 15 strands across, I think. I haven't counted them lately. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, brushes. Okay. Um, the brushes are completely opposite from the sticks in that you can take a brush and just rub it, rub it across the head and get a sound. I don't know if you're getting this, picking this up, but it's a whole different technique. And I don't know where you learn these, where you can learn this from unless you come to my house and I'll show you. But uh, I always play brushes with the snare off, you know, because I try, and, I, and the other thing I try to do, without getting real specific about technique and things, is I try to play the brushes, because they are opposite and they're not sticks, I try to play them, like, I, I don't, I try not to play things that I would play with sticks, meaning I've, you, I, I never see the reason, because I don't have those um, symbols that are, you know, sizzle symbols and things that with the holes in them. So I never play the symbols with brushes. I mean, I'm doing it now, but it's just kind of, um, it's kind of a, like a waste of time to me. So when I play brushes, I'm always playing the drums.
thank you. That's, that's sort of what I do. I even find it hard to, um, not, I mean, just mentally hard uh, to go around the drums with brushes because it's, uh, for me, just artistically, it's, uh, it's uh, strange. So I, I stay basically, my technique is basically on the, uh, on, the, on the snare drum with the snares off to get a real solid round sound and to uh, just uh, play the brushes in a, in a special way rather than trying to duplicate things that you would play with sticks. You might as well just use the sticks. It's a, it's a whole just kind of, I'm, I'm just weird that way, I think. But um, what I'll do now, I was just been told that uh, my time has run out. So I'll just replace this microphone because I am a neat kind of a guy. And I'll just play a little bit more. And uh, thank you all for coming.
Drawin, and then we're going to bring on Simon Phillips. And we really appreciate your patience, and I know it's a long day. We're doing the best we can, and uh, we're going to keep it moving, so uh, hang in there a little longer.